Kamikaze termites. They protect their colony with a special enzyme. A certain species of termite has developed a unique defense mechanism that is unmatched in the insect world. When the colony is attacked, older workers sacrifice themselves by triggering a powerful chemical reaction. The result is a toxic liquid that immobilizes and poisons the aggressor. Termites of the Neocapritermes terracua species boast a unique type of defense. They use something like a chemical weapon. The workers have blue spots on their backs. This is an enzyme enclosed in special pockets in their armor. When the colony is threatened with danger, the termites release an enzyme that mixes with another substance on the insect's body creating a highly toxic gel that immobilizes or kills the attacker. This unusual chemical reaction, which termites use to defend their colony, was studied by scientists from the Institute of Organic Chemistry and Biochemistry of the Czech Academy of Sciences in cooperation with colleagues from the Czech University of Life Sciences in Prague. The description and results of their work were published in the journal Structure. A few years ago, Czech scientists observing a termite colony in French Guyana noticed the peculiar defense strategy of the Neocapritermes terracua species. When the colony was attacked, older workers played the role of kamikaze. During the fights, bubbles suddenly grew on their backs, from which, when burst, a liquid poured out that paralyzed or killed the invaders. On the backs of the workers, scientists noticed two blue spots. Upon closer examination, it turned out that these were reservoirs of a strong enzyme, called blue lacase BP76. Throughout their lives, the workers gradually accumulate this enzyme in special pockets on their shells. When their colony is attacked, older individuals, which have accumulated the most enzyme, burst the shell that isolates the enzyme. This is then almost immediately mixed with another substance stored in the termite's body, which until now was relatively harmless. Together they create a viscous liquid containing highly toxic benzoquinones. Although this kills the kamikaze termite itself, it also immobilizes or kills the attacker. Previous studies have shown that the toxin released from the bodies of the worker bees paralyzes 28% and kills 65% of the invaders. How this enzyme remains active in the solid state on the insect's backs has been a real mystery. Czech scientists solved it using X-ray crystallography. Unraveling the three-dimensional structure of lacase BP76 revealed that this enzyme uses a variety of stabilization strategies that make it not only very durable but also fully functional even in the harsh conditions of tropical rainforests, said Jana Kurloff from the Czech Academy of Sciences, CEO author of the paper. Based on the color of the enzyme, scientists suspected that it contains copper atoms, which give it a blue hue. They also had hunches about other aspects of its structure, since LACCSs are common enzymes and have been observed to catalyze reactions involving oxidation in fungi, plants, and insects. But when they got a snapshot of the blue lacase shape by passing X-rays through it, they were surprised to see that it had a strong bond connecting two amino acids, the building blocks of proteins near the place where the enzyme combines with a second substance to create the toxin. Such a bond had not been seen in LACCSs before. Because of its unique structure, lacase BP76 not only remains intact but also active, despite resting on the termite's back for its entire life. This is crucial to the enzyme's role in defense, because if the colony is attacked, the response must be immediate. Termites of the species Neocapritermes terracua carry this suicidal backpack throughout their lives. The young individuals, which are still able to do a lot of work for their colony, 
both have only small amounts of the enzyme. The blue backpack in which the enzyme is stored grows larger over time as the insect loses strength. The final service that a worker ant provides to its colony is its willingness to sacrifice itself to protect it. Planets that form like stars? New findings from the Webb Space Telescope Astronomers using the James Webb Space Telescope have spotted six strange objects. They have the mass of planets, but they probably formed like stars. And none of them are gravitationally bound to a star. What's more, a small planetary system appears to be forming around one of them. The objects, observed with the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, have caused a bit of confusion in the astronomical community, disrupting accepted ideas about how planets and stars form. They provide new evidence that the same cosmic processes that give birth to stars can also form smaller objects, only slightly larger than Jupiter. Planetary formation is thought to occur in a protoplanetary disk around a young star. They form from grains of dust and ice that collide and merge. Over time, they form so-called planetesimals objects large enough that their gravity prevents the escape of particles created during collisions, eventually accumulating enough material to form a planet. Stars, on the other hand, form from dense clouds of material. When the cloud of material is massive enough, it collapses under its own weight to form a protostar. When the density and temperature are high enough, thermonuclear fusion reactions are initiated and a star is formed. The remnants of material that was not absorbed by the young star form an accretion disk, from which planets form. The process of star formation takes tens of millions of years. The objects observed with JWST have the mass of planets, but they appear to have formed in a way that stars do. These observations could contribute to the development of new models of planet formation. Their description has been accepted for publication in the Astronomical Journal. It is also available in the AR14 preprint database. We're exploring the limits of star formation said lead author Adam Langevelt, an astrophysicist at Johns Hopkins University. If you have an object that looks like a young Jupiter, is it possible that it could become a star under the right conditions? That's important context for understanding both star and planet formation, he added. Astronomers have observed strange objects in the young nebula NGC 1333, a star-forming region about a thousand light-years away in the constellation Perseus. Webb's data suggest that the discovered worlds are gas giants, between five and ten times more massive than Jupiter. They are among the lowest mass objects that are most likely to have formed in a process previously thought to be responsible for the formation of stars and brown dwarfs. We used Webb's unprecedented sensitivity at infrared wavelengths to search for the faintest elements of a young star cluster, seeking to answer a fundamental question in astronomy, how light can an object form as a star, said Ray J. Award Hanna of Johns Hopkins University. It turns out that the smallest free-floating objects that form as stars are similar in mass to giant exoplanets orbiting nearby stars, he added. The telescope's observations did not reveal any objects with masses less than 5 Jupiter masses. This suggests that objects lighter than this threshold probably form the way planets do. Our observations confirm that nature creates planetary mass objects in at least two different ways through the collapse of a cloud of gas and dust, the way stars form, and in disks of gas and dust around young stars, J. Ward Hanna said. The most intriguing of the objects observed is the lightest. It has an estimated mass of five Jupiters. The presence of a dust disk around it means that the object almost certainly formed as a star, 
since dust typically swirls around a central object in the early stages of star formation. Disks are also a prerequisite for planet formation, suggesting that the observations could also have important implications for potential mini-planets. These small objects with masses comparable to those of gas giants could be capable of forming their own planets, said CO author Alex Schals, an astrophysicist at the University of St. Andrews. It could be the nursery of a miniature planetary system, on a scale much smaller than our solar system, he added. These newly discovered objects challenge the classification of celestial bodies, as their masses overlap with those of gas giants and brown dwarfs. Although such objects are thought to be rare in the Milky Way galaxy, the new data show that they make up about 10% of the celestial bodies in the observed star cluster. A -a 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 -a